I've always wanted to make my own resin chess set, but I knew it would take so much silicone it really wouldn't be worth it financially, and I just couldn't pull the trigger. But then I found out they already make chess set molds. I came across this really nice looking chess board mold on Amazon, and it came with a full set of chess piece molds as well, and for 20 bucks I said sure, why not, I'll give that a shot. Fun fact, Wife has never actually played chess, and so I figured I would make the chess board in my favorite color and her favorite color so I could teach her how to play. The chess piece mold are really nice. They have a cross guard at the top so that when they're held upside down they will actually stand up without falling over. They're an open face mold which is never really my favorite but I think for a chess piece like this it's not going to be a problem at all. Each square within the chess board mold is about an inch and a half, well square, and it has tiny little ridges to help separate the colors. As long as you're able to keep it flat and level I don't see this mold being a problem and so we can go ahead and move on to our colors. I'm going to use gold because I have a ton of that and my wife's favorite color is blue, a kind of tealish blue. So so I'm going to use ocean green and ultramarine blue and add some liquid glitter that a fan mailed me. Thank you, you know who you are. I was going to use some gold liquid glitter like we DIY'd before, but I thought that would make the two colors too similar, and in chess you want them to be pretty separate. My two worries are the king and queen molds, because they are really, really top heavy. You can see here just tapping on the desk, they kind of want to fall over. So that's something we're going to have to watch as we mix up our Envirotex light resin. We're going to need a lot of resin for this. One of my pet peeves with buying molds molds like this is they rarely tell you how much resin you need to complete your project. So for your knowledge, it took me about 24 ounces of resin to make the entire board and chess pieces, but that was knowledge I had to figure out on my own. After mixing the resin, I add enough gold mica powder to where you'd think I have a king's bounty. Get it? King's bounty? Chess? I'm funny. Now I place the mold onto a glass table, where I normally do my 3D printing. The reason being it is so level, I can guarantee that I will have a nice flat chess board by the end. End. I cannot guarantee that at all with my other table. I added just a small amount of resin into the first square because I thought it would spread out a little bit more than it did, but it was kind of cold in my room and so things were a little bit more viscous than I would have liked them to be. I eventually found out how much I needed in each square and started getting into a rhythm. I wiped the side of the cup with a tissue every time there was a drip because I didn't want to get any gold where it didn't need to be on this chessboard. I thought that the ridges weren't going to be high enough to do their job, but the surface tension of the resin means you can actually fit quite a lot of resin in each square, so it really wasn't a problem at all. I pop all of the surface bubbles that I can find with the lighter, and because it's very flat there are a ton of surface bubbles, so you really want to make sure that you do this step. Then I take the resin and fill up all of the chess piece molds. I go nice and slow to try and fit the resin in every nook and cranny that I can find, but there's some things like the knight that has a nose where an air bubble can catch, so you got to make sure that you really try and push those out. Then I have to be extremely gentle in setting my pressure pot down so that I I can put these pieces inside of there because any sort of motion at all and these pieces will tip and fall over. You can see the king piece here that I was worried about does in fact tip over as soon as I'm trying to move some things around. So I ended up putting it inside of a Dixie cup that way if it did fall over I wouldn't maybe mess up any of the other ones because I really really was worried that this king was going to be a problem. It didn't end up being an issue for me but it's better to be safe than sorry. And by the way you don't need a pressure pot for any of the stuff that I'm doing in this. I'm just showing what I did and I'll show you some results without a pressure pot here in a bit as well. So I set mine for 40 PSI and after 24 hours they are ready to take out of the molds and they look fantastic. I was really worried that the gold wouldn't look all that great on a chess piece. I thought it would look kind of drab, but man, I was really happy with them. And the molds actually have a lot of detail. You can even see a divot in the knight's eye there. I love it. There are some parts where bubbles and voids just happen to catch. And there's not much you can do about that. I used a pressure pot and still got large voids in some of these and it's just on those little ridges there. I don't know many chess pieces or sets that don't have those, so I just think it's something that's a byproduct of doing it this way. The resin had cured on the board as well, and so now I could pour the second color on top of it without worrying about the two colors leaking. The second color I'm going to cover the entirety of the board with, with just having a few gold squares. I'm going to end up using a tool that we haven't used in a long time, my vacuum chamber, but we'll get back to that in a minute. The ratio that I use is one of the dark blue, three of the kind of greenish blue, and five of my liquid glitter. That gets me a really, really nice looking blue and probably my wife's favorite color, and so that's what I'm going to go with for the entirety of this build. Now, the reason we're using a vacuum chamber is because I really want a clear or transparent board, and I don't have a pressure pot that's large enough to fit my silicone board mold. So I'm going to turn this vacuum on and begin pulling air out of the chamber. I've explained how to use this in some older videos, but essentially what's going to happen is there's no air in the chamber, but there's air inside the resin. So that air wants to get out of the resin the 
more of a vacuum I pull in there. I ended up having to move this over into two separate cups because there was too much resin in one cup and it tried to overflow out of the cup, and so it was easier to use it in two cups and get a little bit more surface area. Eventually, the chamber will find its equilibrium and the bubbles will begin to pull up and pop. Once that starts happening, I leave the chamber for about five minutes, and by the time I'm done, look, that is absolutely clear. It looks just like water, or I guess mouthwash, because it's blue, but there's no bubbles in that at all. So it was time to pour them inside of each of the chess piece molds. Again, you don't need to do this, I just want it completely transparent and clear with no bubbles, so this is my best shot at doing that and since I was already going to use this on the chess board mold I thought I'd try it on the pieces as well. I put some more in the vacuum chamber and begin pouring it directly in the center of my chess board mold letting it kind of flow out into all of the other squares. I really don't think that that mattered there's not really many places on this mold even with the gold resin on it to where you could create gaps or voids so you don't probably have to worry about that. I poured 10 ounces originally and that wasn't enough so I mixed up another 10 ounces in the vacuum chamber and poured that on top. By the time I had made those I had more than enough resin to completely make the game board mold so that's where I came to my 24 ounce conclusion for how much you need for both the mold and all of the pieces. After about 72 hours of sitting there I didn't have to even pop any surface bubbles the board was ready to be removed from its mold and let me tell you you've never felt anything so satisfying. It felt like one large sheet of acrylic because that's basically what it is at this point. It is really solid. I was kind of expecting it to feel flimsy or delicate, but because the mold allows it to be so thick, it feels like I'm picking up a wooden or a stone chessboard. I don't feel like I have to be delicate with it at all. The corners are sharp but rounded, so I don't feel like they're going to break. Really, the mold was just well designed, and so were the chess pieces. I think the combination between the two with the gold and blue is a gorgeous color combo. I don't think that the chess piece molds are going to last near as long as the board. They're nice, they'll probably make about five sets in before I would start to see wear and tear, where the board, I'm sure you can make 30 or 40 boards before you start to see any wear and tear on it. There are some places where voids happen, that's just going to happen with molds like this. If they're not going to provide outlets for air bubbles, you're probably going to get them. Notice how the top of the bishop on the gold one has a little bit more than the blue one, because I used a pressure pot and that helps get rid of some of those those voids. Even with an open mold, the bottoms look fine. They come out really nice and flat because they have that cross piece on the top to kind of keep everything level. I think that it's well designed. And remember when I told you I was going to show you some without a pressure pot and without a vacuum chamber? Well, both of these pieces were done just mixing resin and mica powder in the queen mold and a pawn mold. They look perfectly fine. All I did was pop surface bubbles with a lighter that came up, but other than that, they are the exact same as how I poured the others. And I think they look great, so I think it proves you don't really need to use either of those techniques. They're surprisingly smooth too. I would bet that the molds were made on machined metal instead of sanded 3D prints. It's just that smooth. I'm very excited that these molds worked out so well. Having a chess set like this means I can teach my wife how to play and share that skill with Oh my god, no, Did I didn't mean somebody to say Skillshare! I'm so good at transitions and I'm so glad I get to talk to you about today's sponsor, Skillshare. And if you haven't heard about Skillshare, they're an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who wants to make 2022 a year of learning learning, growth, or connection through creativity. Do you have a specific skill that you're trying to learn, like maybe learn how to play chess? Skillshare is the perfect place to start. Or maybe your day-to-day -day is just filled with tasks and endless to-do lists. So get some self-care going and some wellness in your life and learn something new because that's a lot of fun. For example, if you're wanting to get more serious about chess, check out A Beginner's Guide to Chess by Sam Duffner. I enjoy competition and hope that learning this might help me decompress in my day-to-day -day life, and the kind of Kurzgesagt style animation was just a bonus. So whether you're interested in chess or a bajillion other topics, why don't you help me to help you because the first 1,000 people to use my link in the description below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Well, that was neat, but let's get back to the glamour shots. And they are, in fact, glamour shots. I'm a huge fan of gold, but man, is this blue really calling my name. I was always a huge fan of those chess sets where one side was a completely clear glass and the other one was a much more coarse glass, denoting the two colors. That or on the actual board itself, it would be very similar. And so this kind of gives that same vibe to me. A lot of those chess pieces have almost fur or felt underneath the glass so that they don't break or scratch the glass beneath, but I think the benefit of the the acrylic is you can 
touch acrylic on acrylic without it breaking. Though you may get some scratches on the surface, in which case you could add some felt to the bottom of these pieces and that'd be just fine. But I really enjoy the novelty of being able to see entirely through the chest pieces of one side and the board itself. Also, because this is acrylic, I'm not worried about it breaking as much as glass, so I could take this and set it outside if I wanted to, or at a picnic, or wherever chess people do chess things. Either way, I still hope you enjoy the video. This is tabletop gaming related, right? Chess is just the original tabletop game. Subscribe if you might want to see some more content like this in the future, or learn how to make your own dice. Like that video if you like it. Dislike it if you disliked it. I want to hear that too. Either way, I hope that you have a fantastic day.